And now, without further ado, I have the distinguished honor and privilege of presenting to you the Queen of Color, the Mother of Artists, globally acclaimed, award-winning Master Acrylic Artist, and the star of our show, Ginger Cook, as she once again mesmerizes her audience with the daring do's and don'ts of painting with acrylic. My goodness, I see a light. Is there some <laughs> you light wanted here? a light, I gave you a light. What do you think? It, it, the light, okay, so I see a light, John, and what does the light mean? It means we're live. Oh, Live so and in person, right here from Houston, Texas. So, good. So now that I can kind of clear my eyes from the deer in the headlight stare, <laughs> that the light you what flashed give in it? my eyes. First happened. you want a light, then you don't want a light. I don't, you know, Sammy? I did want a light, but then the light, I was confused by the light. I mean, <laughs> lot, you know, because I, I could, you're not to be trusted. You could put the light at any time. I just don't know. But anyway, it's hard to give, man, I gave you control of the light, man. Mm. Well, you gave me control of the light. Okay, you guys, welcome. You know, John and I are back from um, our sort of working holiday, and uh, there's no sort of about it. You know, we we always do, we're always working even when we travel, but we we're really happy to be back live today. It's a Sunday um, afternoon. We're very May twentieth, two thousand eighteen. And what we're going to be doing today is we're going to start a new thing on Sundays. The people have really enjoyed our ten minute paintings that I've been doing. In fact, the fact that I give them away. But we thought it might be fun to do what would normally take me ten minutes, and I'm going to break it down for you. So it might be twenty minutes for you, but it'll be something fast you can do on your own and you know probably get accomplished today but we'll break it down step by step and what, what was exciting for me was that we're we found another one of our old dead artists and this it's a gal this time her name was um Anne Villeur Coster and she uh died in 1818 she died uh, you know she lived 100 years before Van Gogh you guys and she was big she was a big deal too she wasn't just some uh, you know, passing fancy. I mean, she was exhibited. She had beautiful art. We're going to be doing um, a, a vase of flowers by her, sort of an edited version. It is called Vase of Flowers and a Shell, if you guys wanted to actually Google the picture and maybe do it larger or in more detail. We're doing a very Reader's Digest she, edited version. She was version. a realistic painter. She's a very realistic painter, but we're doing a very Reader's Digest edited version of this painting, but I still think it's fun. I like the fact that we have... Um, you know, sort of this old, uh, I don't know, stone table the vase is sitting on. I simplified the vase a lot and some of the flowers, but I think you guys will have fun painting it. And it's just something, you know, these kinds of things are like doing piano scales. When you're learning music, uh, you just sort of get more used to the colors and mixing and just kind of letting go a bit. Have fun and let go. So we should, in the meantime, if you think this is just a fabulous uh, idea and you like our channel, you haven't subscribed to us yet. We'd really appreciate it. And if you love this, put it in a playlist. Um, and uh, the more playlists that these uh, videos get put in, the more YouTube is likely to show these uh, this this video to others. So if you guys want to help and say, "Gosh, I really like John and Ginger," what could we do that would really spread the word with them? One of the things you can do is, of course, share the paintings on Facebook or places like that. But also the videos and what you're doing, share your artwork and where you found it. But also. Just put the, put your uh, put just save this video to your own YouTube playlist, okay? And um, that you might and you can that would be very nice. And uh, we we think and subscribe to the channel. A couple of things. Should, should we have our disclaimer now? Oh yeah. So for those of you who wrote, <laughs> we had a woman write today. I love oh, this. This is great. You, you guys are going to appreciate writing. this one. Exactly. What was the verbiage, John? Because you she read goes, it. She goes. If you would stop all the talking and just do the painting, my battery on my phone would not die. Yeah, I only had so much. I only had. I think she said there's only so much battery on a cell phone. Well, listen, darling. You Plug know, it in for one. Yeah, that would be a good thing. And the other thing is, you got to remember, if you want straight lessons without all the chatter and stuff, you just go over to our art academy, where we have over 375 lessons that are straight lessons, very serious, fancy lessons. In fact, just let me show you a couple that um, are kind of on the genre of some of the things we do. For instance, John, can you want to scoot us down to the table Ooh, here? Oh, we're going to scoot down. All right, one so second. He's going to show the table. And let me just show you some of the things Bye that you. we have in our art academy 
that uh, you can learn to paint. Oh, okay? I love that one. Look at that with the tangerines and the, and the wooden board. Um, here's another one from one of our old dead artists. Um, this kind of thing. If you, I mean, just saying, if you like still lifts, these are just some examples. And coming up, you guys, coming up for our members is this one. This new one with the peaches and the grapes. Very simple, one cookie lesson on how to start being able to do something like this. Well, it's cookies and crumbs. Cookies and crumbs. So you can see all the different colors in this background, the peaches and so forth. So if you like this kind of artwork and you just want straight lessons, um, for as little as nine ninety five for one week and access at that time for that week to everything, all 375 lessons, and we add new ones every week. You know, Where just are you go... looking? Where? I don't know. You're I... not looking at the camera. Where huh. were you looking? I don't know, at the monitor, probably. <laughs> well, John moved the camera. This is not my fault. John moved the camera. What do you mean it's not your fault? I told you exactly where to look. Yeah, but it's a new camera, and it's right there. <laughs> and you said I could do something like It is. This, Isn't that fun? It's right? fun for you. All right. So it's right there. So that's what I want to encourage you guys to do. For those of you who feel there's just too much chatter, because we have a lot of fun here, and you know, after all, you guys, it's free, you know. <laughs> Just give me You're a gonna break You're going to get here. what you pay for. You know, give me a break. And also, I think we have some of, we have over 300 lessons on YouTube. We have a lot of stuff on YouTube, which I'll talk about in a little bit, too, where you well, can you know, really. Well, choice, we could do, we could do, the, we could be the silent painters. Yeah, never talk. So anyway, all right, so let's just get down to the, you can see we got a little six by eight canvas, which we've painted just sort of burnt umber, all right? Sort of, it is burnt umber. Exactly. And, uh, <laughs> and what we want to do is come up about to two fingers, about like that, two fingers, and just draw a little line across here like that. Like that. So, okay, just like that. We're going to just do that. And then we're going to do about another, another two and do another little line about like that. And that's our... Um, that's our table. If you can't, if you're not getting this straight, try to, you know, try to get that straight, okay? And then in the center, because this is a still life, in the center, we're going to just make a little vase. And you can just make a little, um, kind of curve it at the bottom, like that. I'm going to say, here's our little vase, okay? Now, that's about four fingers tall, yay, okay? Yeah, you know, there you go. I mean, that's pretty simple. It's like the letter U, kind of flayed out here like that. So I don't think you'll have any trouble doing that. There's no, no need for anything other than just that, okay? So that's pretty good. And then what I want you to, you know, as we put our flowers, right, which I'm really not going to draw, but here's, here's one that's going to kind of overlap the vase like this. There's sort of one that's kind of coming down here like this and kind of overlapping our table. Then we've got another one kind of like this. We've got some, I just like to put little circles where I think they're going to go. Then we've got a, a kind of a small one here. We've got kind of one off of here like that. We've got another one like this. Just, just vaguely, I want to make sure I don't kind of lose my, this is going to be the top flower. That's about as tall as it's going to get. We've got a couple others here. And this, is, this big one is going to take up most of this face. So if I just sort of make sure that if you, you don't want to get, oh, you, know, you don't want it to get away from you, in other words. So we're just sort of putting in a few little, just a few little ovals like that in like a little triangular thing like that, okay? So, I mean, that's that's pretty, you know, easy, little circles here, okay? So now that you have figured out how to draw this in, which is, and really all you're doing is just, uh, for instance, this, this flower here is going to be probably a little bit bigger than I made it here. I might just enlarge that a little bit already. This flower is going to come here, but I, and generally... I didn't want to, I want to make sure that I have at least a couple of fingers of, of, of um, space. canvas space before the top of the canvas, that's all. So Breathing. if you have to drop this down to do that or, sh or sh shorten your vase, you know, um, I guess we could get technical and uh, just measure it for people, just to, for those of you who feel that, that that's so helpful. <laughs> this is two inches. I think I'm a little high on this, see? Probably could have stopped this vase right about here. Okay. Well, it looks like you have room. So I have, have yeah, it. I had room, but I might make this flower a little bigger then, see? Well, whatever, okay? It's pretty good. Actually, I kind of like the way I, this one, so I'm leaving that one up a little higher. Okay, so here's the colors, which are the ones people say, we should tell us the colors beforehand. But you guys, we use the same colors all the time. This is no great big secret here. Oh, we're it gonna is a be, secret. We're not going to tell anybody what we're using. You know, um, yeah, so we're going to be doing that. There's a little dazzling purple. 
in a little yellow oxide. You know, that's a good color. If you don't have that yellow ochre for some people, uh, depending on the brand. But there's been a lot of conversation recently about brands of paint and stuff and who's buying what and where you can. Matisse is getting kind of hard to get. Um, I'll tell you what, there is a difference between using student grade paint, though, and professional acrylic. So the, the top, in my opinion, right, the top three acrylic brands are Matisse, Golden, and uh, Liquitex, a uh, heavy body, okay? So um, some people, now here's something, I was going to share something with you guys, big secret, and I'm going to let it out for the public to know, is that some of you are having trouble having your paint dry quickly. You may live in very, live in very warm climates, okay? And in that case, what I'm going to recommend is you buy a tube of white from, a, from Golden called Golden Opens. Now, Golden Opens in general, I mean, if you had all the money in the world, you'd just buy a whole new set of those, too, just on GP, just have them. But most people don't, so I would say buy the white, and here's why. Because you can add it to your other paints, and it will, it will extend the drawing time a little of anything you've added white to. And also, we're going to use a little a transparent white, either zinc. Uh, Golden calls, has it zinc white. Uh, Liquitex calls, calls it uh, transparent mixing white, which is part titanium, part zinc. Okay, and, uh, and I don't know, pretty much Matisse doesn't make anything like that, which is a shame. Right? You can do a little burnt umber. That was your background color. I don't know if you're going to want that. You probably already have that you know, done. I'm going to assume that you have that done or while we're chatting. So anyway, those are the, you know, kind of the things. And we're going to use ultramarine blue. And if you're using Liquitex, it's um, red shade. And we're using phthalo blue. And if it's Liquitex, it's green shade. How's that? Is that very clear? Was it just <laughs> amazingly clear? Why do they clear? do that? Well, you know, I don't know. They got really clever with some stuff. And, you know, they've changed hands several times. It, you know, the problem I always have when brands get sold and change hands is, you know, that I'm not sure about them anymore. But, uh, you know, the new people are going to be just as good as the old people in keeping up the quality of the paint. Yet some people have discovered that when they order paint in the wintertime, certain colors don't do well. Certain colors really are not happy with them, with cold temperatures. Sometimes white isn't real happy, and a raw umber or burnt umber are colors that don't seem to enjoy um, the white, uh, you know, the cold temperatures when it gets that way. So those are some thoughts to... James wondering, uh, what's the difference between a soft body and the opens? Oh, the, there's a patent on the soft, on the golden opens. Soft bodies doesn't mean anything. The They're golden just... opens actually do not... You can put a Hershey's Kisses, Kisses drop like this on, on a, a, a golden open on a, on a palette paper, and it's still wet three days later. Huh. Takes forever. Yeah, it doesn't dry. So, uh, you know, if you do it real thin, of course, it'll dry. And you can't varnish the golden open uh, acrylic paintings for at least two weeks because it takes that long for them to cure. It's they almost have stuffed, like an oil. Yeah, they have stuffed some stuff in there. And I was going to tell our, you know, I, I was hoping that, you know, Alicia, who lives in China, one of our, our, our academy members, I don't think she has access to that. But I think she would really enjoy those paints because, um, um, you know, because of, because of the fact of their of their... They have everything you love about acrylics, okay? But then um, you also get what we love about uh, uh, about oil paints in that they, they stay wet longer. Now, See, I'm asking, why not just use a retarder rather than messing with the golden opens? Well, um, there's a reason why they spent you know millions of dollars in research to come up with those. Uh, because retarders, if you do the wrong amount of retarder, it'll never dry. You can really screw up your paint. You have to have to be a chemist to use retarders. You can use something, what I like here, I use this all the time. You don't really see me using the Golden Opens very much. I use something called satin glazing liquids. Sometimes that will prolong it and, and allow for blending. But I'm just saying that for those people who live in these climates where nothing is helped, you know, their stay wet palettes, nothing is keeping the paint damp and everything, they might just just try a tube of the of the white. Since you use so much white, that's a good way just to get it mixed in with your other paints and give it a shot. Yeah. Yeah, See if like, it helps you. Now here's a little magenta, this quadrichrome magenta. Magenta, someone says, can you mix magenta, make magenta? You cannot. It is a um, artificially made color, uh, conacridone magenta. It's an artificially made color, and um, you know they do tricky things to it to get that to do happen. So you can look that up, but that's the deal with that. Is Matisse Flow the same as Golden Open? Matisse Flow is not the same as Golden Open. Golden Open, let me say this again, has a patent 
on the there. only one that has They're the only one that has a paint like that. Matisse Flow is just um, Matisse Flow is uh, here's some Matisse body. Flow. It's a soft body paint. Sometimes it's nice for thin lines and stuff like that. Again, if you just were the last of the big spenders, you'd have a whole set of those too. My problem with the Matisse Flow, quite frankly, is they don't always flow. If you're going to get a flow. <laughs> I mean, I have not found them to always flow. Some of them are thicker than others. And you open some and you can dump the whole tube out before you even know what happened. You can lose half your tube of paint because it really flows. But on the other hand, Golden makes a, um, a, a, another paint that they make it. Let's see. And let's see if I can find it for you. They make, um, I have it handy. We cleaned up, so I can't find anything. What now. are you looking for, boss? The little tiny tubes of the golden liquid. The, you know, they're oh, kind of. Oh, gross. Yeah. Yeah. If, you know, we have a. Those are nice too, and it's particularly in white and brown. If you're trying to do thin lines, it's it's their. Um, Who, who's this we? Is there <laughs> yeah. A see, mouse in that this box is this now? is the uh, this is what we call the gold. These are not golden opens. These are. Um, That's their flows. This is like their equivalent of their flows. They're called fluids. And they're very nice, you know. Here's the zinc, and here's the titanium in this little set. I want to thank uh, this. This was Judy that sent us this, right? Yes, it was. Yeah, Judy, Judy the guitar sent us this. She's the lady that sings at the end of our video. In case anybody wonders, at the beginning. And one of our and at the beginning. No, no, I no, do the beginning. She does the end. She does the end, and also she does. Um, she's yeah, one of the moderators on our uh, Facebook club. We would not have a Facebook club without our volunteer moderators. We want to thank them very much for all their hard hey, we, work. We pay them highly. <laughs> give them lots of compliments. It's, it's just, yeah. And um, so anyway, uh, let's give a shout out to those guys. All right. So now we've got Cad Yellow Medium, Yellow Oxide, Yacht, Dosmine Purple, Ultramarine Blue, Thalo Blue, Burnt Umber, Magenta, Cad Red Medium, Titanium White, and some sort of transparent white, either mixing or zinc. And those are our happy thing of colors. So I'll tell you what. Atelier, somebody asked what else besides a golden open. Um, Atelier came out with a... Um, an acrylic paint. Who did? Atelier. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not familiar with that name. Yeah, and um, I bought, and I can't think. You know, anyway, that's the company. They're out of Australia. They were before Golden about a year. They came out with stuff, and um, and their paint stayed wet a little longer. And they had some wakey up stuff and all that, and that was okay. But it's it's nothing compared to what um, our uh, people with. Uh, you know, the, the golden o open really just blew the socks off of everybody, and they came up with their open golden company with their open paints. All right, so here's our picture. You can see we're going to start with the vase. All right, and um, uh, one one thing we're going to do is we're going to do a lot of hair drying in this. And this is this is one of those things. If you you're going to have a hot mess if you don't um, dry your painting easily, you've got to dry your painting. You know. One well, thing yeah. I'm going to recommend you do, and I, you'll see me do it in this one. Let's move all our toys out of the way here. Probably put the white here because that's what I'll use the most of. And I'm going to take a, just a cloth, and I'm going to fold it right next to here like that so I can wipe my brush on it, all right? And I, we're, going to go, we're going to go kind of slow with this. I need a dark base, so I'm going to start with my dark color, which is thalo blue, okay? Maybe a touch of purple, a little thalo blue. And I'm going to come over here on the, on the right side, I'm using an angle ruby set silver 3 8 inch angle brush. And I really quite love these. I'm going to bring this up even a little higher than where the flower is going to overlap this, but I'm going to ignore that for now and just paint the vase in. Okay. When you're painting over chalk, this is a damp brush. When you're painting over chalk, you, you're going to, it's like picking up sand, so you have to kind of, you know, um, be aware that it, it'll drag a little bit. Now, now I'm going to get a little white paint like this, and I'm going to come over on this side like this. And I want you to see how this side of the vase is lighter. Do you see that? You're going, duh, Ginger, of course it's lighter, okay? Now, there you go. You can take these brushes and you sort of spin them and get that curve, okay? Now, I'm going to bring that up like this, okay? The center now, the as we get, hang on a second. Now, as we blend this together, look what happens. We go back and forth, wipe the brush off, Come along here like this, barely touch it, and blend it together so that it, 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 you just have a little bit of the light base over here. Do you see how we did that? I mean, really tricky, right? Okay, now, question? Yeah. Does the hair dryer work on the opens like it does on acrylics? Uh, the hair dryer does work, so you can dry them. I mean, you usually just skin them over so you can keep going, yeah. 
So you, it does work. It. Okay. Yeah, so it does work. And they feel like it goes that you can use these with them. Um, uh, with their other paints, they've said that you can. Uh, you, I, I don't like to overuse them when I mix them with other acrylics because, you know, like anything else, it can get sticky. But there you go. Here's a little damp brush, and I'm just doing this like this and kind of tapping this in. See, I'm just tapping in the lights on the vase if you're having trouble blending. That's what we're doing. And, in fact, I even want to get a little bit darker on this side and take a little more purple. Come over here on this side. Now, I want you to see how easy that is. Now, wipe the brush off. See how the, all the paint's coming off my brush? Now I'm just going to tap this in, smoosh it into this side. See that? I want that a little bit darker. And that's that's really, if you're having trouble doing this, a brush like this is, they're not that much. I think they're under 10 bucks. I mean, I, I've seen them as low as 6 And And they're just, you'll see me use it 90% of the time I'm using this. Now, I can't really do much else until this dries, all right? So that's the key. If you got to, if you're doing, you know, pictures like this, you've got to dry as you go. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to just take a second with a hair dryer and dry. Can I answer one more question before I dry? Can you answer one more question? Uh, no, you can't. Okay. Well, there's no questions to ask her. No. All right. So now we're going to just hold the hair dryer pretty close, and I'm going to put it right and dry it. All right. Okay. All right. Well, she's drying that. I think I muted her. Uh, we'd like to thank our Facebook group for giving us that great little surprise gift that you sent us. So we could have a date night. We had a wonderful time. We really appreciate what you guys did for us. Uh, it gave us a chance to get away from the studio and filming and everything and come up with even more ideas and more paintings to paint. So we have so much more to do now. Thanks for giving us time off to give us more things to do. Okay, we back. Am I sounds back on? Yes, you are. All right, so for those of you who come in late, this is one of our, uh, this is a new old dead artist. Uh, she was 100 years, uh, lived 100 years before Vincent van Gogh. In fact, she died in 1818, and her name was Anne uh, Valier Castor, C-O-S-T-E-R, Coster, Anne V-A-L-L-E-Y-E-R. And this is called um, a vase of flowers. This was the actual painting. I want to show you, it had a little a vase here and stuff. And a few of these flowers, and we just, like I say, we're doing a little 10-minute painting, but we're taking a little bit longer to show you how to paint it. This should be about a 10, 10, 10 15-minute painting for you once you get it down. But we, like I say, and we're, we're doing drawing six by eight. We're doing six by eight. We're just drawing this step by step, and we left out the shell. And we just, again, kind of a fun way to you know do a picture like this. All right, so I know I want a flower here. I'm already in the blue, so I'm going to take a little bit of ultramarine blue and phthalo blue, and um, Oh, before I do that, I'm going to just, I lied, I'm not going to do that. I've got to put in the, um, I've got to put in the, um, Can you believe she lies to the, the, the board. So I'm taking a little bit of white, uh, and uh, mixing white and burnt umber, and I do this sort of light board color, a tiny bit of cad yellow medium, just a little bit, warm that up. Now, wipe off, tap off the excess, and I'm going to just put in our, um, our table, Okay what we're painting on here just uh just that's going in here like that and uh we can do that that's pretty easy um one thing you want to be careful of when you're using an angle brush always have the long end pointed away from the direction of where you're going if you go up like this it's like rubbing the fur the wrong way on a on a cat or something Never go up. Always make sure you're taking the long end away from you as you go, either left or right, okay, or hold it flat. Now, let's just do this a little bit more, a little bit more mixing white here. We're going to come under here again. It's still wet, and I'm going to come under here on this edge. We're just going to make this a little bit lighter edge. Okay, now I don't want it quite that white, so I'm going to take a little bit of yellow oxide with it. Let's see if I can do this, wipe most of that paint off. If I get too much paint on, one of the things I see because I do, we're we're doing, uh, we've been doing for years. We've been doing art art help, you know, art co coaching for our academy members, and we started to do video art coaching. And then I actually video what I'm, you know, the the my voice and what I'm telling you to do. That's like sort of a new thing we've added this year. And one of the things I noticed that the most uh, I'm seeing the most um, as far as things that could be better is that uh, we're seeing. 
people use too much paint on the brush. They don't understand that you put the paint on the brush and then wipe it off, okay? So there's our table. Now I'm going to just go in here. You don't, you see me rarely rinse the brush, but you'll see me wipe it a lot, okay? So here we go, a little bit of phthalo blue, okay, like that, probably about like this. And then the trick is, this is like a, um, the shape of this flower is is more oval. Does that make sense? It's more this way, like that, okay? So what I want to do is I'm going to do the outside petals, and I'm just going to use the tip of this brush, and I have some going this way. Don't make, don't make them like a sunburst, okay? Have some little petals going this way, and then maybe going like that. Okay, this is our little outline. Maybe you're going to come this way with them if you have to turn your canvas upside down. Now, as we go around the corner here, um, about, you know, close to 7 o'clock, if this was a clock, we're going to do some darker ones, okay, like that. Maybe make it a little bit darker in here. So now you'll see me, just see me wipe off all the time. Just tap my brush off. Now, my paint, if you notice it, when you've ever, ever rinsed a brush and cleaned it, you'll know how much paint's in it, which is why sometimes, even though I didn't get any more blue, I just went back into titanium white because my brush is dirty. So as the more I touch this, the um, it will mix with what's here already on the brush and actually make a different color, okay? So now I'm going to take a little bit of ultramarine blue and white, and I'm going to come this way, a little bit more white this way, come this way, and kind of curve it toward me now, saying that this, is, this flower is kind of going this way. Wipe off. Um, and then I want to define a few of these petals like that. Teresa is asking, can you refresh my memory on why we use mixing white? What's it used for again? Mixing white is a transparent white. We use it to when you don't want... Uh, titanium white is like, a, 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 you know, is very opaque and mixing white is translucent like wax paper. So mixing white, if you, if you use that, it's not going to change the color so much. It's just going to very gently lighten the color. We also use it in landscapes for atmospheric perspective, okay? So let's get a little bit of this purple now. Come on here into the center. So I'll need purple. Make this pretty dark in here like this. I'm going to come out here like this and do a few lone straggly petals there. And then here, just a couple dots of this, okay? All right, there we go. We're going to leave that one alone for a minute. You see me tapping off. Now, um, I've got another flower here I think I can do the same thing with. This is, I think this was supposed to be like a, um, I forget now what they call them, but it's a different, different flower altogether. We're going to come this way like that using this, the angle of the brush coming, come, kind of come down to a point. Now this is tricky because now we're going to go back this way, kind of change the brush direction a little bit. She, she got a little bit wild and crazy. Each layer has some different brush directions, and hers were very translucent. If I were going to try to do it exactly like hers, I think I would use a gel, you know, probably a modeling you know, a gel, if you really wanted to tackle one of hers with the paint to give it that. Some of her, her colors are really almost look like they're like jewel tones. You can practically see through them. Okay, let's Here's just, another question for you. Going back to the uh, problem of drying out paint. Okay. My paint stays wet on my palette, but dries out too fast on the canvas. Doesn't the glazing liquid make the colors more transparent? Um, depends if you use too much of it. I don't use very much of it. It can, a little bit, but not much, not badly. Okay. The glazing, you know, you just have to experiment. What I would do is I would just get a little piece of canvas like this, and start doing some tests on what, what one, if I use this much glazing liquid, what does it look like? And dry it with a hairdryer. Don't experiment on your painting. Find something. You've got little pieces of canvas all over the place, right? So we're going to just say, here's our little flower coming up like this. So, all right, let's get a little bit of pure color now. We come in the middle of this and we'll put some on top. This is the darker blue, the ultramarine, phthalo blue, and then wipe the brush. 
get a little purple on this side okay like this there you go and I think I'm going to put a little of this purple color back down toward here like this before I have to dry it I'm kind of doing the blue flowers as long as I'm you know in the neighborhood of blue now wipe the brush come back with the white and uh, just white 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 maybe then wipe and then maybe do three and then white 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 wipe the brush and then get more white 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 wipe wipe white wipe white wipe white wipe white wipe okay there see how cool is that so that those are little tiny individual brush strokes now i'm going to rinse okay so rinse and here's the other reason why you want to rinse is because the paint's drying in your brush too it's drying here it's drying in your brush you can take you can take a little water mister like this and you can just gently mist if you want just gently don't get it too wet you can do that okay now we've got another kind of light blue flower here and some others but i well we've got a little one we she did some little tiny ones here um so i guess we could put those in um a little bit of white and blue here let's um well let me gonna wipe all this off see i love these towels you can do that let's come back up here with just some phthalo blue we'll make the dark color first i'm just going to make a little kind of rounded almost like a boutonniere you know what do they call those um i don't know boutonniere flowers all right something like that and i think i had one down here too like that just a kind of a little round flower here on the vase okay wipe 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 now straight into the white paint okay now we're going to come down here from the bottom one two three wipe more white paint all right now we're going to come up here like this and do circular ones wipe 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 more white paint all right so there's that one wipe 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 now down here we'll do this one we're not going to be as careful we're just going to go one two three just a few little dots of just suggest wipe 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 uh, a little bit of paint paint here some sort of little flowery here thing Maybe put a little bit of blue back. Got a little carried away. Put a little bit of blue back here like that. All right, so those are those flowers. Now, at this point, I need to put a, like a pink flower right here. I think that's dry enough where I can do it. Are there any questions I can answer before I uh, get carried too far along? Uh, no, ma'am. I'm sorry. We're answering all your questions. Oh, good. You guys, thank you so much. All right, so all right, so this, this flower here, this pink one, it's got this sort of, planet size thing and then I want you to see that, that things are coming it's going to come down at least this far and be kind of this oval shape right here it's a big one all right um I think I want to dry that right there first I'm gonna, not going to take a chance on this blue rooting my pink okay so I'm going to take a minute and just dry this all right one second Ready? yes go ahead Okay, while she's drying that, um, yes, this is the original had the shell on it. It's a vase with the shell, I think is what she called it. And where did you get your towels? The, tea, the towels that she's using right now, we got those on Amazon. They're in the automotive department. I believe the gals may have a link on that. And I don't believe she's used any tub of towels yet. You haven't used any tub of towels yet, have, have you? I've not used our tub of towels yet. Okay, so now... Remember, I had all this blue on this side, so now I've got to turn the um, uh, the towel over because I don't. Otherwise, when I wipe the brush, I'll pick up the blue, and then that won't be helpful. Okay, so we're going to start with the bottom layer of this, of uh, and we're going to do white and magenta. Okay, make this sort of pretty light pink color. It's pretty. It's pretty light. Um, the other thing you have to appreciate too is it's hard to know what colors there actually were. This painting is really old. And so her flowers may have been a lot brighter than what this is showing. You've got to keep that in mind when you're looking at stuff, um, um, you know, that's, that, you know, when you're looking at these old paintings like that, because um, uh, there is, you, you're, you know, the oil paints fade. I mean, over time, they'll fade. And you don't know what kind of, you know, someone could have owned this painting before it, it made it to a museum. They probably did. And who knows if they put it in sunlight, something like that. 
So we're going to do some little small ones around Ginger, here like this. Why do you wipe off the paint and then get more paint on it? Uh, because I'm changing color. And so rather than rinse the brush, I just wipe it. Or I'm done picking. I'm close. Of, those people that bought one of Ginger's original paintings, if you look very close at the brush strokes, those brush strokes have in them 10 to 12 colors in a brush stroke because she doesn't wipe her brush. She only wipes her brush. She doesn't wash it between colors. You got to really look closely at one of these paintings to, to really appreciate what she does. Okay, so you notice that things are kind of going around like that in a spiral. Wipe, wipe, wipe. Now, I'm going to go right into white paint, do the next layer like that. And they're not, they're kind of in between. They're, they're not following the same place. In other words, you, you want like shingles on a roof. You want these, um, uh, these flowers to come, these petals to be a little bit different. Also, if you get too much, if I want it just on the tip of my brush, and when it's not on the tip of the brush anymore, then I need it somewhere else. And it's also picking up colors underneath because this is still wet, so I'm clearing up. I want some lighter color. It's like mopping a floor. It's picking up. You get in the habit. You practice this. You get in the habit of doing this, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Either I'll re it, I'm reshaping the brush, too, as I do this. Um, much much happier to reshape it. Hey, we'd like to thank um, Eric for the donation that came through the PayPal system from our website. Thank you very much, Eric. Wow, listen, and thank you so much, Eric. Eric's always been just a, such a lovely supporter. We thank you very, very much for that. And we thank anybody that, you know, we, again, we talk about this a lot. We, we pretty, where somebody said, you know, do you guys realize we do like 30 paintings a month? And, you know, we do like two, four, six, eight, eight to ten. How many? Two, four, six, eight, ten, something like that, just on YouTube. And, you know, we buy all the canvases. We do all that ourselves, you know. We, and um, we buy all the paint, just like you do. Gosh, now I'm starting to tap in toward the center and leave it darker. Do you see what I just did? Just sort of, there's this flower. Now, I might take a little bit. Again, you'll see me wipe the brush off, reshape it. I might come back in here with a little bit of magenta. You know, this shadow side, I might make a few little bits of darker flower here like that come down all right so we're keeping these pretty simple but um, now the center is going to take a little bit of yellow and phthalo blue and um, uh, that's too bright so let's put some yellow oxide now here's what the mixing white will do let's just tone this down a little bit and put a little bit of purple in it and gray it okay so we're going to gray that a little bit more mixing white so here's our center it's sort of a a soft gray green in the center that's that's where we started now you see me wipe off the brush a little bit of titanium white with that now and here's the outside on top of that I'm going to lighten that up just a hair just dot that on there like that okay then rinse the brush because I'm, I'm in green so now I've got to rinse it and you'll see me wipe it on this rag and if I'm still seeing green seeing green I still I'm still rinsing you see the green so oh, I'm no. still I'm still no. I'm still wiping it. Now I'll come back here with the pink color. Okay, here's our pink color. I want to come back here with a few more outside petals like that. All right, make sure that I have these there. All right, so that's about what we're going to do with this flower. Now I've got a blue flower up here and then I've got but I've got an orange flower over here so that it's really, it's, it's magenta and cad red medium and white, okay? Kind of a peach color. So this one is, um, it's, uh, okay, so there's, it's, okay, here's the, here's the center of this one. So it's, it's coming around like this, and it's wider on this side. It's going to overlap some of this blue one here, okay, like that. So there's the center of that one. Okay, so now we're just going to go ahead with this little kind of salmon color. Go this way. And um, it's really too much paint on the brush. Okay, now I'm going to get some white and come right on top of that, but don't go quite to the edge. Like that. Do you like the sound effects? 
Okay, and then just tap this out here like that. Wipe the brush. More of a uh, the cad red medium. Okay, we're going to come on this side and we're going to make this flower brighter over here on this side. This is our bright side of this flower. Now I'm going to wipe the brush off and then get a little bit of mixing white, which is transparent white, and touch that because I don't want white, I want transparent white. And just dab that in there like this to give it a little bit of a flowery effect. I mean, obviously we're not doing exactly her brush strokes, but this is sort of a fast, fun way to do this flower. A little bit more transparent white up here. Just a few little... There, okay, we got a flower. Good enough, okay? All right, so then the next flower in here is this... We've, we've, we're mix, I'm lose, mix, losing one. I'm going to put this blue one, okay? This other blue one, but it had to be on... It overlaps this. So what you have to do with something like that is... Um, let me just put this right here for a second, see where I am. Well, I've got a gold flower here, but that's going to interfere with... I've um, got this little gold flower here. I think I could probably put some white. I didn't before, but I'm going to put a little white right here in just a place where I think my gold flower is going to be, like that. I'm just going to tap some white in, just because I want it a little bit brighter than I got it in this picture, because yellow really only happily paints over white. So we're just going to make that white first, and then we'll come back to it, okay? And this, yeah, that's good. So that will just make white, and then we'll make yellow, and I'll show you. You'll see the difference easily, okay? Now, while this is, before we get too far, Let's come back here with our ultramarine blue and thalo blue. And let's just come on up here like this. And um, if you need to, kind of, um, you can shape a flower petal or something if you need to. Come back up here, maybe make that darker down here at the bottom. So if you lost some of the dark on, on your vase, or you had to come up here and reshape a flower petal, that's a good time. Here's a little burnt umber. I don't have to clean my brush for that. I could come back up here, like kind of like this, and um, just come in there and just maybe just reshape a petal if I didn't quite get it just the way I wanted it. Okay, so that's one thing you can do. Is you can always go back with your underpainting color. Okay, so we're drawing, right? You are. I am. And then you can come back and do right where you are yeah, there. Then we're going to come back I'm and do right in here. That area. Yeah, so we're going to come back here. Okay. Right. Everybody, kind of keeping up with me now. Do you guys kind of see what we're doing? I'm, is this helpful? Because we're trying to slow this down a little bit for you, see how we're doing it? We have one question. Oh. I have a brown background trying to use the color wheel, to, color wheel to choose color. I almost did red. It did not match it on my color wheel, but the blue is awesome on, the, on it. What are your suggestions for colors not on the color wheel? Well, brown's a neutral, like gray, so it doesn't really count. Brown, anything can go with brown because it's a neutral. Make sense? Green and brown. Green green looks lovely with brown, by the way. You know, kind of like brown's a neutral, like gray. It doesn't, you know. All right, dry. All right, she's off and drying again. Um, it's all about drying on this. And you can see why we're zoomed in. You can see some of the different colors each brush stroke has, because she doesn't clean the brush. Um, when I did a close-up of a couple of her photographs the other day, I just stopped and looked at them and really noticed that I think one of them had like eight, eight to uh, 12 colors on it. All right, you're up. And I want you to see, just take a moment. The thing I see a lot of people, they'll do something on, um, on you know, particularly we have, we have a lot of members in our private Facebook club and the only way to become a member of that is to join our art academy now and then you can request to be a member and you can join. But the nice thing about that is we have Art Show Saturday where everybody shows their original stuff, what they've been painting. And we have Family Friday where people show what their kids are doing or their aunt or their uncle or someone that they painted with. And we get the people are very helpful. Judy is always telling us about sales and we get a lot of art history. So it's a it's probably the most unique painting club, probably one of the most desirable ones on YouTube as far as being a member goes and, and how, how much you get out of it. But one of the things I see when members are showing us artwork that they've done for my tutorials, I would say the biggest thing people are doing is they're not drying enough in between colors because that you know your colors are mixing right there on the canvas too. So keep that in mind, you guys. You want to be drawing inside of that. So 
we're going to do just a very light blue blue flower here. Um, yeah, going to do a very light one blue here like this with the um, putting in our petals like that. And then these are getting a little bit shorter here. This is kind of overlapping there, but these are kind of shorter. So I don't have to talk that much about this one. But as I come this way, um, I want to um, have some more light ones. See, the other reason I wipe up, if I have a hunk of paint on my uh, brush, I'm going to wipe that off too. Here's my next little layer of color like that. And we did quite a bit of detail on this first one. So I don't know that I'm going to do that much. I'm getting it lighter toward the middle here. And then I'm going to get a little bit of ultramarine blue. And on this side, we're just going to put a little bit of that color over here. And then back to our mixing white. Just, just tap in the color like that. Just to take a little bit on your brush and you, you've got a little blob here and just do that. And it makes it kind of a nice little petal shape on the back. Wipe it off. Start again. See this little bit of here and just deposit it like that. Peggy's That's, asking, can you explain the pack to me, please? P-A-C? Yeah, personal art, pack is what we call personal art coaching. It's called a pack. And a video pack is where you send me, you send me a painting. Suppose you sent me this painting, right? And I'd say, well, Vicki, this is good. I like what you've done. I'm going to video this as I'm telling it's, you. It's you hear Peggy, my voice? It could be Vicki. It could be Vicki. It could be anybody. <laughs> but we're just pretending it's you, right? Wasn't that who asked the question? It was Peggy asking the question. Oh, well, all right. Then it could be Peggy, right? Sorry. <laughs> well, I didn't know if I heard you. All right. So I'm going to say, you know what? The first thing we're going to do is look at a black and white photo of this. I'll show you mine next to yours. Then I'll tell you what you can do to improve it. And you're going to hear my voice. Sometimes I'll just say, you know what? This is the, one of the most fabulous paintings I've ever seen in my entire life. I'm so proud of you. I just think you really got the lesson. Go frame this. And just anytime you're feeling bad, play the video back. You say to yourself, Ginger thinks I'm a genius, right? It's fun, right? So, you know, you can get one of those messages too. But you're going to get the honest truth. And sometimes I might tell you, I think this painting is over your head. If you insist on keeping going with this, then I'm going to suggest you start back here and start again and do these things. So you're going to get total honesty from me. We don't, you know, a lot of times, you know, when you put your stuff up on Facebook, everybody just tells you you're great whether you are or not. But if you really want to learn, really want to get better, um, and don't, but I'll never ever say anything hurtful, but I might just tell you, you may not want to hear, start do over. these lessons first, then come back and try this one. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, everything is, um, for instance, you wouldn't try to do algebra before you learn to add, right? People well, want to expect long divisions before they start doing calculus, that kind of thing. So sometimes, but everybody likes the calculus pictures, but sometimes they're still back in the division state. And there's nothing wrong with that. You've got to get these skills down, which is why these 10-minute paintings are kind of helpful. Yeah? All right. So we, you saw that. Now, let's see. We're going to take a little bit of a brown color here with a little bit of cad red. Oh, let's do a little orange. She didn't do it, but I'm doing it. I'm changing it. A little bit of color in here right around the outside edge of this. Maybe, I guess she did blue. I guess I like blue. A little bit of dark blue here, too. Okay. Linda Harvey, thank you very much. I recently received my first pack. Love it. All right, so you guys, these are really something. And, and the new video packs are so good. Um, they, they make such a difference. Because I, I, don't, I know they make a difference. Because I see what you send me back. I'm going, holy smokes, you heard me. You understand it. Sometimes it just takes a second pair, of, you know, a little bit of a look here to see what we're doing. Okay? So is that dry? Now, I would like this a little bit darker here. Here's where glazing the medium can happen. Oh, you could do water, too, by the way, if you didn't have it. Make sure this is really dry. But let's just say, for the sake of argument, that I wanted this a little bit darker right there. Okay, so I've got that white there. So I'll take a little bit of this glazing medium, a tiny bit of cad red medium, and more glazing medium like that, right? So tap off the excess, and now I'm going to just come over these like that, just touch it. Darken this up a little bit, just a tiny bit, like that. And again, you could use water too, but that's a that's one of the things you can do with the um, glazing medium is you can come back and you can add a little contrast. So see, just put a little bit more red there. That was kind of nice. And I think I want a little light green too. Yellow and that yellow blue, a little light green color. Just I feel like we just are missing something in here here something. 
Okay, good enough. Let's put a little green in there too. Just something. Sandy All Long, right. I got my first video and worked on it. My first video pack today and worked on it today. Loved it. Thanks. Yeah, and I was doing that. Even when we were traveling, I was doing that. We had very poor internet connection, but we just hung in there with you and uploaded it at night. We really wanted you to get the most out of these pictures, okay? And, you know, your painting experience. And so that's really nice. And once a month, you can send me some, you know, whatever whatever painting you may have found something on Pinterest or you may have found a, a painting that you want to do from a photo or whatever. And we'll, we'll work with you on those too. Okay, so we're back to the... We're going to do that yellow, so take a little bit of yellow oxide, a little bit of mixing white, and we're just going to kind of tap that on there like that. Say, so here's our little yellow flower. We're not going to get too carried away with this one. We don't need a lot of details, but then we take a little cad red medium toward the center. Too much paint, so you see me wipe that off. Just tap that in the center like that. To just give it the sense that there's another little flower there, and then we'll do a little green center like that. There you go. So that's, we're not doing a lot with that, but we, we did something. Now here, is this still wet? I think it might be okay. Let's, let's do this next flower. This is a, you've seen me do this flower before. It's almost a, it's like a wheel, okay? You're going to just come around here with the petals like that. You know, just a little, little wheel flower. There's a couple of these right here. And you, you want to reshape the brush. You'll see me do that. The brush flattens out too much. Then I'll reshape it. And I, I found with this other painting that I did, the one I did for you guys as an example, that the first time I tried to do the red, it was um, it dried on me, and then it didn't look very red anymore. It was really disappointing. So I had to do it a couple of times. I had to give this like about two coats of red. Okay. That's so, and I want to make this this one a little bit bigger. Okay. All right. So we're gonna leave those alone. See, this is coming along. Don't you think this is fairly easy, you guys? Now that you've see, seen kind of how we do it. Um. I think I had another little blue flower right here. All right. I'm pretty sure I did. Right here. We had. An, we need another little blue one right here. Just drop one down here like that. And maybe get, put some dark with it. Too much paint. I'm glad you're seeing me do that with the wiping it off because I do that 90% of the time. Put paint on the brush, tap off the excess, maybe come in here with a little bit of dots, something like that. There you go. Okay, a couple of white flowers there. Pascal's asking, I realize that you always paint really loosely. Is that just a technique or is it just a preference? Well, I mean, this is the kind of flowers that I'm doing. I do try to paint loosely, but, you know, we certainly have done some super hot, more realistic things, too. Here's a good example. Can you show the bridge picture? Can I back out a little bit? Go All ahead. right. So here's a, this is our Wave and Water Master Class. I don't know if you'd call that painting loosely or not. A lot of layers in that, and that's one of our master classes. It depends on who, on, on who I'm... Um, uh, what we're painting. Who we're painting. But, you you know, the thing is, is if you started out as a drawer, someone that could draw well, you have a tendency to want to draw everything. You put an eye on a face, you feel you have to draw it in. With When you're painting, you're, you're, you want to use the color, all right? So I'm going to get a little magenta here on these back ones here like this. Just pure magenta back here like this. And just put a little bit over those like that. Here we go, a little bit more on this one. So next layer, it's still at the CAD show. And then I'll come back on top again with maybe CAD and a little yellow. I want it slightly brighter. Here's my next. There, kind of brighten those up. Okay, so that's like a three, three part uh, thing. All right, so we've got, um, yeah, now we've got these little funny, funny little curvy things, right? So what I did was I just using the angle brush here, I just came out here like this and wiggled some stuff down like that. And then came up here behind here like this and wiggled, you know, something like up here like this. She had some little weird things. I don't know what it was. Hey, we'd like to thank Sandy for the donation. Thank oh, you very Sandy, much, Sandy, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm going to do another one here. Just kind of use the, remember the brush is pointed away from me. Okay. And as long as I'm painting, I'm going to add the, she had um, 
little bit of ultramarine blue and white, we're going to put a few little pods on here like that. Um, the, the white and blue on your brush at the same time. There we go. A little bit of little bit of white, a little bit of blue, same time. Little blobs of paint. Notice we didn't wipe that off. Okay. Little pods of blue coming down like that. Oh no, I think that's kind of pretty. Now in the my painting here, I had a a little white flower here. I kind of like it better without it, so I'm not going to add this flower. Don't think. It, sometimes you just have to ask yourself, what can I take away and not ruin the effect? And I think that's a good one. I don't think we needed anything right there. I like the the V in this um, very much. So I like the, the the contrast of this flower with the dark um, uh, background. If you, for me, I think that's kind of nice. Just kind of it gives a little more contrast. The same thing over here, kind of like that. So then finishing up, what I want to do is take that burn number. I'm going to scoot down here, and I'm going to show you this. She had, um, there's like this crack here. It goes at an angle and goes down. And that to make that work, you then want a little bit of um, mixing white and burnt umber and a little bit of yellow oxide, kind of make this sort of light color. And you come along this side of this and then come down into the, um, just next to the crack, okay? And we'll just do another one over here too. She had kind of a, like a little niche in the um, in that, and then on this one I didn't do it, but we think we have time. If we do something like this, take a little bit of yellow oxide and brown, um, do something like this. We can just make little circles and suggest that. Let's take a little cad red medium with that too. Let's just suggest a little bit of brown. Let's just suggest that this is um, some sort of board here. Okay, the darker line underneath it, okay. Hey, we'd like to thank uh, Madonna for the donation that came in through PayPal. Oh yeah, thank really you so much. really appreciate that. A little bit of ultramarine blue to make something very dark underneath here like this. And say that that's the um, underneath, a little burnt umber and ultramarine blue, see, underneath there, okay. So we could actually say then, we could, if we really wanted to be crazy, we could come down here like this and make a little crack in this. And um, then you, you, you just pull it this way. You pull that line this way so it's all out of focus. And then do something really dark next to it, like that. Kind of make it, you can make this nifty little crack. And the, the secret is you have this little light color kind of right on the edge that you blend back. See how I wipe the brush and then just pull it back a little bit and stop. We'd like to thank Two World Swings for the donation as well. Oh gosh, Two World Swings, thank you very much. What a world swing. Two World Swings. Yeah, there you go. So I've got a little purple on it. Didn't that make an interesting crack? Let's do another one right here. Just, I, I like it because it really makes everything look just so old when you do that. You know, to me, it just really kind of ages the whole thing. So, um, and then I might even just sit, just take a little bit of yellow oxide and just right here on the bottom of this, um, do that. You could, and then bring it back up while it's still wet. So you, it's not really an outline. Don't make it an outline. Just have it a slightly, every once in a while, a little gap of light. And it looks like this old um, thing. Now, I know you're saying, what about the shadow? I knew you were waiting for me to do the shadow. So let's come under here. That's too dark. A little bit of burnt umber. Let's uh, just pick that up here first. A little bit of burnt umber. I grab purple. Let's take a little bit of burnt umber. Come under this side of the vase like this. And do a little bit of a shadow right here. What do you guys think? Isn't that kind of pretty? Okay. So that's... Um, now, let's see. Could we do a little more with the... Let's go back. What can we do with the flowers? Let's go back and do a little... Um, let's do a little bit of a wider green here in the center of this, like that. And I want a little bit of dark blue in the center of this one. Make that a little darker. Okay. And, oh yeah, we got to put, you see me constantly rinsing now and wiping. Now, 
At this point, I'm going to take the towel and turn it over and do this. You're starting a new place. That's one of the tricks is keep, keep that towel in good shape there. It's a little yellow oxide and yellow. Let's put a little bit of um, let's put a little bit of a yellow center in these. I think they're oh let's try a little mixing white with that. Lighten that up. Here we go. There we go. Here's our yellow center in these. Tap that in there. Maybe with a little purple dot. How's that? Dot. There we go. Hey, we do want to remind people that um, as of June 1st, the personal art coaching will be on a waiting list. You can still become a member of the Academy and have access to all the lessons, but we'll, the, the Art Academy will definitely be on a waiting list, okay, for personal art coaching. And when someone drops out of the Academy, and, you know, we have people for various financial reasons or something quit, when someone quits, then we'll add... Well, you'll do it be on a first come first serve basis. Now I want to make sure I lighten up the base here a little bit more. Now see how I'm wiping off my brush, then just taking a little bit of the darker blue color, like that, same way I did it before. Wipe, wipe, wipe. Now I'm going to just blend that together again. See that? I just wanted a little bit lighter, and I didn't do it before on this, but I'm going to. I just want a little bit of a light on this face. She didn't do it, but you know what? Ginger's doing it. Just sorry, just feel like I need it. Uh, Joy's asking, is the top pink flower have a middle, or is that still the background showing through? The one there on the wall. Uh, the top flower needs a middle. Thank you. We don't have a middle yet for it. Still the background showing through. It had sort of a um, kind of a off white, kind of a greeny background. It just this was a kind of an off white little middle like that. That's the middle it had. And we'll do a little bit of dark blue in the middle, but just barely touch it. And it wasn't that. She had hers a lot lighter. I just like the contrast. I don't know how much of hers faded. Problem is, I don't know how much of hers faded. Probably wouldn't hurt to look these flowers up yourself. I mean, they're real flowers that grow places. And just, um, you know, really in real life, they grow somewhere. <laughs> and just just look I'm them up and see. I'm not going to touch that one. Um, well, I'm just saying that they're not fantasy flowers. One. These are actually flowers, right? I'm going to just sort of... They're not ginger flowers. Well, I'm just saying you could look them up and see what they... Because I think what's happened to a lot of these old paintings is that... Here's our next little color of light on these. Okay, I'm going to just... And we'd like to thank Elsa for the donation all the way from Iceland. She Iceland. says, keep up the good work. Best wishes from Iceland. P.S. Receive my auction pieces safely. Moonlit skies going on the wall with a smiley face. Oh, that's what I'm so glad you got that piece because I think it's perfect. For I the think that I love north. that. That was a that was a lesson we did on YouTube on clouds. Where did I put my YouTube examples? I'm sorry, I was not in charge of those. Yes, you were. No, I wasn't. Oh, uh uh. Sure? The bear and I, we were over here setting things up. Yeah, but I had. To, oh yeah, I was gonna. Did I show you this one? But I'm just going to show you some ones we did. We've got some great ones on YouTube. I thought I brought them over. Maybe I left them in the bathroom. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I wanted to show you this. If you haven't done Ode to Copy, this is one of my favorite lessons that's on the Academy. If you have not done this, if you like this kind of stuff, this is one of my favorite lessons. This that has, is a, you know, a lot of people have done that one. I love and this. They and you put, the cup. Yeah, they personalize the cup. Put their kid's name or their name or their husband's name or something. I love this painting. If you haven't done that, that's one of our Academy lessons. When you have over 300 nifty lessons in the Art Academy, I'd say that we're... Um, you have plenty to do. You have plenty to do, don't you? I think so. You absolutely have plenty to do. So I would say we're... I think we're pretty we're pretty good here as far as what we, what we need to paint here. Caroline has a question. I know shadows are used to anchor objects in a picture. Is a rule of thumb for when and where to place a shadow? Yeah, it goes to the opposite side of where the light is. So if the light's coming from this way, the shadow has to be here. Okay. So, um, and that's, you can pretty much guarantee it. And then this flower probably is causing a little bit of a, casting a little bit of a shadow too, right? Probably so let me is. come around here like this and do a few of these a little bit darker. Here, like that. Just do a few here. Where, you know, that old rule, wherever there's a light, there's a dark. I either had to lighten up the, there, just coming around like that. There on this one, okay? And I might want to put, I might darken up something by here now. Now I'm just playing with the lights and the darks, okay? This had a little bit darker blue 
edge right here like that. I'm just looking at the original plane. Okay, now we've probably gone beyond the 10 minute painting, but I think it's pretty close to a 10 minute painting. I mean, maybe not completely a 10 minute painting, a little bit of an exaggeration, but I think it's close. And um, I painted Ode to Coffee and got a blue ribbon at a fair. Did she? Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. Archaea? Wow. Archaea? I think so. Um, well, you know, I don't know what the coffee craze is in, in the world right now. But there certainly is one, isn't there? <laughs> there is a coffee craze. And when I was growing up, you know, there was just something about the Maxwell House coffee and, you know, good to the last drop. And everybody was pretty happy with that. And uh, But, boy, I'm telling you, a Starbucks took over. And um, I'm going to put a little bit more shadow right there under this flower, see? So, so you know, this flower probably caused a shadow. So with hey, the We'd like to thank Mati for the donation. Came through the PayPal system. Greatly appreciate that. Oh, yeah, we do. Right. Thank you very much. Now where are you? All right, so this is. I think I'm we're done. I, I, I think I'm going to just sign it and call it done, you guys, for a ten minute painting. Kind of like for the second one. For a ten minute one. painting in an hour and a half, not bad. I think I like this one. You know, we had to explain how to do it. You know, what I mean, I don't know which one you like the best, but you know, again, you can. Um, I mean, you could do this larger, and you could spend a lot of time on the flowers, but you got to get the idea of how you'd paint this, don't you? There. Okay. What this little pinker here, a little bit. Where's my little light colors here? Acrylics have a tendency to dry darker, so now I'm coming back up here with the lighter colors too, like that. All right, so I'm going to just stop here and sign it. And I hope you guys had fun painting it. And again, if you want to look up the original and see what that was like, you certainly could do that. And look how we did the little funny just ledge, which is good. The funny ledge. And these are good practice ones. You do them small. You don't have to, you know, make them too big. Just get some, you know, have some fun with it. Okay, that's what I would tell you to do. Have some fun with it. Now, we are going to give one of these away today. Is that, is that, no. Yeah, we are. Are you kidding me? No, we're going to do it fast. Oh, we're going to do I'd it. like to uh, thank Renate, Renate, I think, Renate for the donation. So glad I found your channel. I love painting again. All right, you guys, we're going to give one of these away. I'm glad you love painting again. Oh, Donette, thank you very much, by the way. And I'm glad I'm glad Ray, you did oh, because minute, painting she, is she, fun. She did it for me. Renee, Renette, nay, Renette Tay. Renette Tay. Renette Tay. Ooh, that sounds French. What do I know, though, right? Okay, so again, if you came in late, this was this a painting was originally done in the mid 1800s, and it was actually done in 18. Um, it was done in 1870. Or 1780, rather, 1780, by a gal by the name of Anne Vallier Coster, V A L L A Y E R, Coster. C O S T E R. C O S T E R. So it's Coster. a hyphenated name. Too. I, I don't know if you were saying it like the French might say, you might say Anne Vallier Coster. I don't know. Anyway, that's how I think my French would pronounce it, my sad little French. So, anyway, um, I hope you guys found this fun. And we're like I say, we we have two. We're gonna give we're gonna definitely give one away as a, in our in our raffle for our live audience for you guys that showed up on a Sunday. We're gonna do try to do more of these short paintings on a Sunday. Something you can easily do in your spare time. How's that? I wish I had some. You know, when you got, you just feel sort of inspired, do this as a little practice. There's nothing wrong with that, right? So. So, John, you want to just, what is our magic word? Can you set that up? Or is the that magic true? word is CAD red. I'm hoping one of the gals has got the link. My computers went to lock mode. We I don't them. want to destroy it. I don't want to lose the feed. All Michelle, right. thank you for the donation. Love watching your videos. So we have a, do we have a... Um, so I'm assuming we're still broadcasting. Well, are we well, having we are trouble continuing. with the, are we having trouble with the, with the link? We're having trouble with my computer decided to just sit here and spin the little wheel. Oh. But it's still showing up on my YouTube, on, the, on my iPad, so I know we're going out there. All right, so what would you like to do? You want to still try to do it today or you want to do nope, it tomorrow? Nope, Tanya's got it. Tanya, Tanya's our hero. Tanya's got it. Okay. That is the link. Tanya's got the official link. I'm not sure what Mona's got. She must have the long link. I don't know what she's got. Hi, Mona. She might have a long link. Say hello to Mona. Judy's got the long link. Hers isn't fully linked. There they go. Let's see if we're off and running, people. 
All right, we're going to do this pretty quick. If you guys have got about, uh, um, about what, about three or four minutes to... Uh, well, we haven't gotten any responses yet. This first one just came in, so let's... All right, we'll give you all a little bit of time since we're kind of, we kind of did this last minute. I just thought it might be fun. All right, so right now what I want to do while we're waiting for that is I want to show you my favorite thing because this is a perfect time to show you. These are my tub of towels. If you haven't seen these, I, I'm wait, telling you wait, what, wait, wait. I've been painting with acrylics for years. Hold on a second. And Can mostly you, how I clean my hands is with a scrub brush, one of those little green scrubbies, and kind of it's hard on your hands. And then last summer, I found these. And, you um, discovered them. I discovered them. Here's, here's one of my... I'm just down to the last on this box here. Um, and you just tear one off. And I have used all kinds of wipes over the years, and they left my hands feeling crummy. Uh, either that or they were so caustic they ate holes in the wastebasket, you know, that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> really. Um, and what I like about these is that uh, you not only can clean your brushes with them, they, they're, they're designed for... Um, uh, acrylic you know all kinds of household cleaning but also for acrylic paint and they have all this they're environmentally friendly and they've got you know vitamin stuff in them and um you know i'm telling you what these are they're great on your hands and they really are and they take your you look at that they just clean you off and you've got to i'm telling you what i'm doing these private lessons over at a friend of mine's house and her studio is really nice lorraine's oh good grief you guys you Man, does she have a nice setup? Mm. Not that I don't, but she really does. And she's a neat person, you know, with cleaning people twice a day, twice a week and stuff. So everything's perfect. And so I'm sitting in one of her chairs giving her art lessons. And, you know, me, by the time I'm through helping her paint, I have paint all over the chairs, which kind of annoyed her, quite frankly. She's not saying anything, but she could just tell that she's one of these people. That she doesn't have any paint on the floor in her studio. No paint, even on the floor. That imaginable. So, I mean, what this I found... This is unheard of. I had... There was this some dried paint on her chair and then she was just a little disgruntled about it i grabbed one of these things and cleaned it off in seconds she goes oh thank you that really annoyed me and i'm thinking yeah i thought it did you know? <laughs> and we need to tell you tub of towels do give us some tub of towels they too. gave us they gave us some because they, we love we, them. We, we've been saying this for months and for nothing and one of our one of our viewers wrote and said listen ginger loves these things you ought to send her some and they like what we said about them because i don't think anybody ever thought about for acrylic painting, I think they think more like painting walls and stuff, you know? And so um, I, I think that this is a great application. I mean, I, I tell you what, I have a thing of these in the, you know, in the bathroom in case I come out of the shower because I often get, you know, paint way up my elbows and I might miss it. Anyway, that's my thing. And um, they do take, oh, well, listen, I got, like I got a little paint right here on the iPad and this will take that right off. You know, because I have I get paint everywhere when I paint. It's one of those sad little things. So if you want to see more of this kind of painting, let us know. We um, uh, it would be interesting to see if somebody painted this with different colors. You know, you yeah, they're flowers. You can have all kinds of fun with this little painting. You can can have all kinds of fun with this. Um, I th I thought I thought the blue was pretty. The, the blue, blue vase and all the blue, the blue flowers. It was a little bit really nice. kind of reminded me of when I was a kid. I liked frosting flowers, you know. Still do, really. <laughs> <laughs> still do, and um, uh, yeah, that was nice. Still like them. So there's our our stuff. So we're getting a few people into our. Uh, we got two hundred. Come on, entries? people. There's 444 of you people out there. Only 200 of you want this gorgeous painting. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Anywhere okay. in the world, we'll we'll mail it. Yeah. Don't worry if you don't live. You know, if you live somewhere, it's okay. We sent. We've sent stuff to Iceland. I'm telling you what, we've sent. If stuff we can to, send it to Iceland, we can send it to you in Timbuktu. Timbuktu. That's a real place. Did you know that? Yes, it is. I did know it's that. It's a real place. While we're doing that, while we're waiting, let me just show you some stuff here. I I think this is a good time. We're waiting for the thing. Let's just do a quick experiment. Somebody wanted to know about these uh, flow paints. Let me just show you. Here's a little bit of this white flow. And I want to show you the difference with say, say um, this is not the golden open now, you guys. This is just the golden, uh, what they call their fluid paints, all right? Which is like similar to the Matisse flow, but what? But I like the little bottles. You can buy bigger ones. I like these little bottles. I think I would have, if you guys just um, were wanted to, I would get a little white and I would get a dark brown because you need dark brown for like leaves, you know, for tree branches. So when you do something like that, and you take a take a you know a little angle brush, 
and I'm just going to, you know, like this. Now, let me just show you. It, it has the same opacity. Look at that. You can do these very, very tiny lines with it, and they flow really easily. Where if you're using, uh, here's just some white here with some pink in it. I mean, this does too. You know, this does too. It's a little thicker. This is a little thinner. So depending on what you're trying to do with that, um, this flow stuff kind of, Maybe that helps you if I did it like that, kind of show you, just kind of wiggle this through here, right, like that. You get a little, you get a little bit longer run with the paint on your brush. Does that make sense? A little bit longer run before you run out of paint because of the way it loads it, your, the way it loads in your brush. So that's a, this is a good thing. They don't pay us to say this either. I just, I, we try to be helpful, you know. The one thing John and I are, are you know, very cognizant of. It's the fact that we're all, you know, wanting to get the best value for our our, um, our paints, okay? So when you, you know, when you have a, you know, when you have a tube of paint, say like this, and you make sure that the lid's on it, and you, you want to make sure you, you know, particularly something like Liquitex is a little bit easier to, um, because it's a soft plastic container, it's a little easier to kind of get all the paint back up to the top of the tube, like that with one of these paint rollers. But if you have, a, say, a tube of paint like this, okay, um, sometimes it's not so easy. So you want to, if you don't, we got a whole video on just, you know, a little short one on just doing the, using, having a little gadget like this. My thing has been, you want the plastic with the metal inside, not all metal or not all plastic. Because if, the, if your gears are stripping, then the thing doesn't work. It should be, it turn up very easily. But that's, you're trying to save money. That's a good way to save money on your paint is to take one day, just take a moment and uh, make sure <laughs> make sure your lids are on or you can squirt paint clear across the room and you would not want to do that, right? Make sure your it lids sounds like are you're on. talking from experience. Oh yeah, I've done that. Absolutely, <laughs> I've done that. So you, you, you know, you push it up as far as you can. Now you have to be careful. If you push it up too far, you'll split the tube and then that would make you mad madly unhappy too. So, I mean, you can do something like this, but a little bit of like something like when you just do this, you don't have to go very far. It, it just, you know, this stuff is, you know, it's not inexpensive and it's nice. It's a nice way to save money on paint. So I think probably that's as much time as we're going to spend on this. We'll put our uh, uh, picture back here and uh, get ready for our, uh, get ready for, for, our big for our big drawing. Okay. And, um, See who uh, wins our um, ten-minute picture that took us. Well, how long did it take us? Uh, we've been on the air an hour and a half. Well, gosh, <laughs> that well, is so close to a ten-minute painting. Well, but it is. If I was doing it, it's a ten-minute painting. That, you are, okay? Wait, 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 wait. I have a film here that shows you doing it. Yeah, but I was explaining it step by step, John, which is not the same thing. Oh, you so see? if you were in your own quiet little chamber, I'm just. I'm telling you, you want a challenge? I'll just do it again in Ooh, 10 minutes. Oh, okay. No, 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 we don't have time. All right, so what do we got? So we're going to do... Uh, All right, we're shutting we're, down, One people. of these we're going to keep for our records, and the other one we're going we're gonna to send to somebody. So we're going to do a drawing with our computer from a voice of uh, you-know-who from... We don't want to... One of my staff members. We're, we're drawing between one and what? Where, where are we? Well, I, I have to stop the entries. I've got to grab them all. Okay. I bring them up now. They've loaded. They're loading, still loading. Boy, we've got a. Uh... So we had a few more people enter. Yes, we did. We got so, up to 238. And if you haven't done any likes on this video, this would be a good time to do it. Do a like. And cool. I guess the uh, question of the day is uh, what are your favorite flowers to paint? I'd like oh, to know that. What are your favorite you flowers know, to paint? I should have asked that. What did you add? Oh, man. Do that for tomorrow's question. What are the favorite flowers? I always want to know these things. What do you kind of like to paint? I just thought these were sort of pretty different. Well, We've got so, so many different ones. Between one and 238. We have a whole playlist on just the flowers and vases. 71. I'm always way at the other end. So what was the, well, how many, how many, two, how many uh, drawings? How many people entered? 238. 238. Was, was picked. And it's this person here. And who is that person, John? Who is the winner of our picture? I know the first name. Uh-huh. I believe the last name, I would guess, is 
Italian. But you know me in the English language, I have not a clue. What would you like to say? The first name? Can, can people, so maybe other people have that name, but you want to start with the first name? The winner is Ann C I C C A R E L L I. C. Well, okay. Ann. <laughs> Congratulations, Ann. <laughs> Ann, say it again so she hears it. C I C C A R E L L I. Well, I, I Cicarella. Cicarella. Anne Cicarella. I, I'd go with that. Okay, so congratulations, Anne, for winning the you know winning this painting. I'm glad you. You don't come here to uh, learn how to speak English, or uh, do math. No, but you certainly can. This is a good place to come to paint. Check out. Uh, and if you didn't do Italian in the spring, do you have the picture real quick, John? Of it, which? It, did you do last? You guys, if you haven't done last week's uh, YouTube, we we left on uh, on traveling. And um, so last week we did, um, just got paint all over me again. I love it. Um, last week we left, um, yeah, the one, yeah, it's spring in Italy. If you guys have not done that, that was a, there's no chatting. That was just a pre-recorded video, full hour and a half, I think, of, uh, of art lesson. It's very similar to what you would get if you joined the academy as far as the type of instruction we do. This is our spring in Italy. It was by an, 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 another of our of old uh, dead artists. Uh, Hang painters. on a second there. I got things in the way. Oh, I can't move anything. Well, I can zoom out. Uh, Wait a minute. Who's got my zoomer? Well, I could hold it up, too. But, you well, know. I, can't change, I can't change anything on the computer okay. anymore. So, there we go. So we this, got it all. This is Spring in Italy. and if you, This is one of our free YouTube lessons, and I think this is one of our very, uh, uh, very... Um, representative of the type of instruction you get on our art academy. And again, um, uh, the nice thing about, and I'm going to say this as you as we sign off, is that our art academy members are, are grandfathered in. As long as you keep your subscription, monthly subscription going, you're grandfathered in not only to your price, but to your art coaching. You're grandfathered in. So the current members are, are snug and secure. It's just you new guys. Snug and secure. You want I like to join that. You're snug the, as a bug in a rug. Yeah, and secure. So you want to, you know, and we have some people that we started with this three and a half years ago and are paying paying our introductory price of um, almost $15 a month. You know, and now we're up to 24 So anytime you join, if you keep with us, you we're guaranteeing that price for you as long as you stay a member, which is nice too. All right, so thanks very much, you guys. We're going hey, to be wait back. a minute. Wait a minute. What? What are we doing tomorrow? Tomorrow we're going to do another 8x10 painting. I have not done it yet because I have to do it now. Well, after off the air, then uh, join us tomorrow, 730, um, and we're going to do an 8x10 uh, lesson. Uh, be kind, of, kind of fun, kind of a, uh, kind more of, of a ginger, ginger original, but it'll be fun, and uh, I think you'll be surprised when you see it. And if you're a club member, if I finish it ahead of time, we will post it on the club and then add it to the thumbnail if we get it done before the show tomorrow night at 7.30 Central. Ann's last name is Chicarella. Chicarella. Yeah. Oh, congratulations. Was she excited? I was so close. Well, sure you were. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye, Bye everyone. Thanks. I can't do the sign-off like we normally do because my, oh, I came back. They finally woke up. Sammy, take us home, buddy. All right, thanks very much. Bye. Bye. I'm a student, I say with glee, of Ginger Cook's Academy. Take your time and do not rush. Use ruby satin silver brush. Don't use black and mix the green. Learn what blend and grayscale mean. Yes, I hope each day to earn coaching praises as I learn. I'll be an artist, wait and see. Ginger means the world to me.